In this video, I'm going to talk about the 2020 8th generation iPad. So, a little over a week ago, I received my brand new 2020 8th generation iPad. This is a 10.2 inch screen, which is an upgrade over my previous iPad. I've owned exactly three iPads since, uh, since I started using tablets. I believe I had an iPad mini, perhaps it was third or fourth generation, but I, I want to say fourth generation. And more recently, I had a 9.7 inch fifth generation iPad. Today, I mostly use my iPad as a consumption device. So I'm watching Netflix or Prime Video, or, you know, I simply want to respond to email and do other productivity away from my desk, away from my computer. So it's nice to be able to take something as portable as, you know, this iPad with me wherever I might go. So my first impressions of the iPad 2020 eighth generation 10.2 inch is the the new chip the a12 bionic chip not new maybe for certain iphone users but certainly new for ipad users it's noticeably fast one of the interesting things though it's only fast for about a week and then you start to get used to how fast this works and then you forget about your old iPad very quickly. So uh, there is, uh, I guess it would be the opposite of sticker shock. It's the initial impression that you get with an iPad. And then of course it just becomes normal after a while. The other thing too is I chose to go with the 128 gigabyte model. Previously I had the 32 gigabyte when I had the 9.7 inch. So I found that uh, if I installed a lot of apps, I had to offload many apps from time to time. Now I don't seem to have to worry about that. I've literally reinstalled almost every app I've ever used on any of my iPads on this new one. And I still have two thirds of the, the storage capacity left. So uh, I'm really happy about that. So this might lead you to question, why did you upgrade? What was so wrong about your previous iPad? There's a couple of key points here. So to stay current, I always want to have a relatively new piece of technology. The reason for that is that if I decide to get rid of this device a year or two from now, I'm going to have a much easier time selling a 2020 edition iPad iPad than let's say a 2017 inch iPad. There's a lot of capabilities in this new model that just didn't exist with my 9.7 inch. The first thing obviously is the size. They're both retina displays so they both offer a really nice display to look at. The previous uh, processor was an A9 processor. This is the A12 Bionic. I'm not really sure what Bionic is, but uh, it sounds good to me. Certainly, I like the six million dollar man back in the 1970s. I watched it religiously, so anything Bionic is good in my books. The Obviously, the 128 versus 32 gigabytes makes a big difference here as well. And the other thing that's really nice about this model too is it's compatible with Apple Pencil. Uh, the only criticism I have of Apple Pencil is the method of charging is, and I heard, I think it was uh, one of the other YouTubers say this is the most un-Apple solution to charging a stylus that they've ever seen, and I would tend to agree. A separate charger would make more sense, but certainly, um, you know, there are other solutions that you can go with. I do like the fact that the cap for the Apple Pencil, which would probably be one of the easiest things to lose, you know, you get a nice little satisfying magnetic click there. So it's less likely to disappear. I picked up one of these silicon covers for the Apple Pencil, which slides right onto the pencil. And then you can insert the cap in this piece here making it easy to open up, but keep the cap actually attached to the pencil. So it's not going anywhere. And of course, um, the one thing nice about the Apple Pencil is that it does come with a gender bender that allows you to connect this plug directly into a regular lightning cable. 
and then charge it with its own cable. So easily done as well. Should you upgrade? So that's the question that, that does come up. And um, I think if you're, if you're in my situation where you have an iPad that's two or three generations ago, it totally makes sense. You're gonna get the faster processor, you're gonna get the more storage if you select that option. And of course, compatibility with Apple Pencil. If you're a creative person and you wanna be able to do digital artwork, digital drawing, uh, it makes sense to have an iPad that's compatible with that. If you have the seventh generation iPad, I'm not sure that I would upgrade. The differences are, are minor. It's basically the same body, the same design, the same screen, and same compatibility with the Apple Pencil. I believe it's a slightly different processor. But, you know, is it something that's going to uh, absolutely blow you away? I've seen some videos on YouTube where people are literally doing video editing that would challenge many laptops directly on the iPad. And of course, uh, the ability to do a lot of video editing is something that uh, is, you know, is something that you can... Uh, enjoy with the A12 Bionic processor. So overall, I would say um, it's a great upgrade to do if your iPad is a few years old. If you can get a few hundred dollars for your old iPad, you can put it towards the purchase of this new model. If you're, if you're working with last year's model, probably not. You know, I'd probably wait till see what uh, comes out in 2021 or 2022 uh, before upgrading. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.